put your hedge of protection around us and you just kept us uh, safe and healthy. I thank you, Lord. And I ask you right now in the name of Jesus just to bless us right now as the word is being preached by Reverend Shari tonight. Bless us with your holy word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. 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 Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Well, again, welcome. It's Friday night, so that means it's Inspiration Church, and we have come to worship Him. Hallelujah. That's right. I thank God for um, each of you being here today. We um, just uh, adore each of you for being here. For those who are joining us online, those who are joining us by the phone, those of you who are joining later on as you listen on YouTube or however you are, I just thank God that you have found us and know this, that you are at the right place. Inspiration Church is the right place. Hallelujah. Because God, he has a blessing for you. And so now let's get right into his word. We don't have any further ado. We, the main course is God's holy word. And so, first of all, I want to give him glory, honor, and praise. Hallelujah. That he would have us Amen. to come together in the beauty of holiness so that we can study, so that we can hear, so that we can digest, so that we can live out his word. Mm. And I know that you are excited about hearing God's word. That's why you're here today. And so I give God honor, glory, and praise for our co-pastor, Reverend Dr. Zebedee C. Harry, being here tonight. I thank God for him. Also, I praise God for your faithfulness and that you could have been anywhere else on a Friday night, but you chose to be here so that you could hear God's word. And so know this, that God, he blesses those who diligently seek after him. Those who are mm-hmm. seeking him. That's you. You're seeking him. You're seeking after him on a Friday night. And so God, he is the rewarder. Hallelujah. And so we just thank God for each of you. Now, if you will, turn in your Bibles to first kings yes god has us in kings again um i believe last week we were in second kings but tonight he this day he has us in first kings chapter three and our focus scripture for today if you'll run your finger down to the 10th verse amen amen this is short and sweet scripture as our focus tonight and in your hearing is God's word from the New Living Translation. And it reads, the Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for wisdom. Today's title from the Lord is a real mother. Let's go to God in prayer. Most gracious and all wise God, creator of heaven and earth, Lord, we come before your throne. First of all, thanking you, Father God, because you are God, and beside you there is none other. Lord, we just thank you right now because you give us peace, because you give us joy, because you give us all that we need, hallelujah, and all we need is you. Lord, we just thank you right now that you would have us gathered this day so that we could study your word. Lord, I thank you that you put me behind this holy desk. Lord, I don't take it lightly. Lord, I thank you right now for your Holy Ghost power. It's not any power of Shari. It's not even, I don't even have power to stand up here on my own. I don't have the power to even have breath in my body. But Father God, it is from you and you alone. And I always want to be well pleasing to you, Father God. So Lord, I thank you right now that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart is acceptable in your sight. You are all of our strength and our redeemer. Lord, we just thank you now in your precious and mighty and majestic name, Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 And so it is Mother's Day weekend. So, you know, this Sunday we celebrate Mother's Day. And mothers are warm and caring will sacrifice everything and anything to ensure that their children are cared for. 
She can juggle multiple details at once while maintaining her eyes and heart on her children. She will hold them and she will scold them. She will give sound advice and help you with her last bite of food or her last dime. Children are a blessing from the Lord and mothers know that. And whether she is a mother who physically birthed you, a mother through marriage, an adopted mother, a spiritual mother, or any other type of mother, know this, that she can even be a spectacular mentor, a friend, or even that senior lady who gives sound wisdom. They are all called mother. Before we go any further in our service tonight or today, let us take time now to reflect on mothers who have transitioned or passed away since our last Mother's Day or even before. I cannot neglect to mention my spiritual mother, Mother Clara Carr, who transitioned at the age of 98 last November of, or November of 2020. And so I miss her so much, but I would be selfish to think that I'm the only one in that situation. So, and I'm not selfish. So at this time, let's have a moment of quiet reflection and pray to the Lord, thanking him for the mothers who have touched our lives and who have gone on. Amen. 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 Praise God. So now, I know you're probably wondering, we're talking about Solomon and that Solomon pleased God because he asked for wisdom. How can this be? So our scripture today that comes from 1 Kings, the third chapter, um, and that's where we'll be. But let's just back up a little bit. Because there are only two chapters before that. And so let's talk about or just review what happened in those first two chapters of First Kings. That was written, remember, traditionally by Jeremiah the prophet. So King David, the mighty warrior and beloved king, he was almost dead when Solomon's mother, Bathsheba, influenced David to make Solomon the next king. Although Solomon, he had no military experience. Now, most of the time, those who rose to become king, they had some type of military experience. But Solomon, he didn't have any. Also, there were others who were in line before Solomon. But this didn't matter to Bathsheba. She was focused on her son becoming the next king. And so as the favorite wife or the favorite wife of King David, she was able to persuade David, hallelujah, in his last days to go ahead and have Solomon anointed as king. Now, <laughs> this set everything in motion for Solomon to not only be respected, by the people, but to also be able to take the throne once his father, King David, died. And that's just what he did. David was able to tell Solomon what needed to happen with some of his enemies, and that's what David did. I mean, King Solomon did. He took care of David's enemies, hallelujah, even after David had already gone. Now we are in chapter 3. So let's look at that very first verse. So thinking about this, that we're, what led up to this was Bathsheba, a mother, hallelujah, who was making sure that her child received the kingship. And now here we have Solomon. He is, verse 1, Solomon made an alliance with Pharaoh, the king of Egypt and married one of his daughters. It's like, what? 
the record player, you know, it's like soft music is playing. And then all of a sudden, this happened. It's like, what? Run off the track. Like, what? But most times, kings, they made these political moves. And so it was a political move for Solomon to marry the daughter of the king of Egypt. And that's how he ended up with all of these wives because of all of these alliances that he had. But here it is, the first one. And here she is from Egypt. Remember the children of Israel, years before that, <laughs> their ancestors were what? Slaves in Egypt. But let's keep going. Solomon made an alliance with Pharaoh, the king of Egypt and married one of his daughters. He brought her to live in the city of David until he could finish building his palace and the temple of the Lord and the wall around the city. Verse two, at that time, the people of Israel sacrificed their offerings at local places of worship for a temple honoring the name of the Lord had not yet been built. Solomon, verse 3, and we could talk a lot about that right there, but let's keep going. Solomon, verse 3, Solomon loved the Lord and followed all the decrees of his father, David, except that Solomon, too, offered sacrifices and burnt incense at the local places of worship. The most important of these places of worship was Gibeon. So the king went there and sacrificed. Talk about King Solomon. He went there and sacrificed 1,000 burnt offerings. Now, Gibeon is a hill. It's about six miles northwest of Jerusalem. All right. Verse 5. That night, you know, after Solomon has sacrificed and burnt these incense, that night, verse 5 lets us know, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream. And God said, what do you want? Ask, and I will give it to you. Solomon replied, you show great and faithful love to your servant, my father David, because he was honest and true and faithful to you. And you have continued to show this great and faithful love to him today by giving him a son to sit on his throne. Amen. Verse 7. Now, O oh Lord, my God, you have made me king instead of my father David, but I am like a little child who doesn't know his way around. You see, David, yes, he was young. And most of the scholars believe, when you look at the accounting, that he was around 20 years of age. So he was young. But the other part of that is he was inexperienced. And here on top of that, the drop factor is now he has power. So that is a combination or a recipe that could be lethal. Mm. But God, but God had asked him. What did he want? And basically, oh. it could be anything. Verse 8. And here I am in the midst of your own chosen people. This is Solomon talking. Still talking to God. Mm -hmm. Here I am in the midst of your own chosen people. Hallelujah. So we know the reason why they were chosen by God is because Jesus Christ, the Messiah, would come through their line. But God, he chose them. And he says, a yes. nation so great and numerous, they cannot be counted. Remember, God, he keeps his promises. He had told Abraham that his descendants would be like the sand on the seashore. Hallelujah. They could not be numbered. Like the stars in the sky. And so here mm -hmm. it is. It has come to pass. All of these great numbers, now Solomon, Solomon is in charge of them. And so he says, verse 9, give me an understanding heart so that I can govern your people well. 
and know the difference between right and wrong. For who by himself is able to govern this great people of yours? Now that's beautiful right in itself. We pray for all of our leaders today, all of our political leaders, all of the leaders in the different countries of the world to have a heart like that, to say, give me an understanding heart so that I can judge between right and wrong. Mm. Amen. An understanding Amen. heart. That reminds me of a mother's heart. You see, a mother is patient. Most of the time. A mother hears everybody's side of the story. All the children got a side. Everybody got something to say. And even if it's a single child, they actually, they have a side to say. And so then, and only then, after she has prayed, can she make a wise decision. That leads us to our focus scripture today. Verse 10, the Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for wisdom. Now, I know you may be scratching your head like, wait a minute. Solomon's not a mother, but keep listening. This is our life aim. It is to be well-pleasing to the Lord. I say, that is my life aim, to be well-pleasing to the Lord. As mothers, that is our life aim. Is to be well pleasing to the Lord. Amen. And are you asking God what God wants for us? Living to be pleasing to God? We cannot do anything successfully without the wisdom that comes from God. Amen. That wisdom, knowledge, understanding that's gained by Amen. experience. Wisdom that is a gift of God because it's a characteristic of God. Almighty and all wise God. Hallelujah. A real mother cannot do anything unless she has the wisdom of God. Mothers today, if you want good success with your children, if you are if they are going astray, mm, you are losing sleep trying to figure out how to reach them. God is asking, what is it that you want? Ask him anything. And when your response is wisdom, then he is well pleased and gives you the desire of your heart. In this sinful work, it takes wisdom, the wisdom of God, not the wisdom of the world to be a real mother. Do not seek after the way the sinful world tries to reach our children. It will not work. You can't mix some of God and some of the world. You may be friends with your children today, but because you did not do it the way God wanted you to, the way that mm -hmm. now you look into the world and figuring out how they got, well, okay, that guru over there, or that expert online over here, or that person on TV, or this magazine, they're telling me what to do with my child. God is saying, listen to his sound wisdom, which you can find in the pages of the Bible. All you have to do is fall on your knees and pray, yeah. knowing that God, he is the one who answers. And now you may not be friends today. <laughs> or yes, you are friends, but they may not see you as a friend. How can you do this to mm -hmm. me, mama? How can you not give me what I want, when I want it, how I want it, every time I want it? But God is saying, when we do that, then we are actually setting up that child for destruction. God, he is letting us know that all we have to do is give in to him. Give in to him knowing that he is the author and finisher of our faith. All we have to do is rely on him, not on the devices and schemes of the wicked one. And when we are standing there looking all around, what happened? What happened? Why isn't my child still my friend? I did everything the world wanted me to. God is saying you got to do it his way. And only his way. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't you know that the wages of sin is death, but the gift That's of right. God is eternal life. You Amen. give them what they Amen. need, 
and you give them instruction and then they might not like it right now but later on <laughs> later on they'll come back mama mama thank you for loving me mama thank you for taking yeah. care of me hallelujah and god will give us that wisdom that we need today yeah. verse 11 so god replied because you have asked for wisdom in governing my people this is talking to solomon god replied to him because you have asked for wisdom in governing my people with justice and have not asked for a long life or wealth or death of your enemies i will give you what you ask for i will give you a wise and understanding heart mm. Amen. such as no one else has had or ever will have and i will also give you what you did not ask for riches and fame <laughs> That's why I know everybody wants riches and fame. But God said, oh, yeah. because you didn't ask for that, Solomon, now I'm going to give it to you. Uh -huh. That's all right. <laughs> no other king in all the world will be compared to you for the rest of your life. You see, uh -huh. we have to seek ye first. <clears throat> seek ye first the kingdom of God. Better still, yes. seek ye first the heart of God. Yes. Mm. Yes. And then he will give you what you ask for. He won't only yes. give you what you ask for. He'll also give you what you didn't ask for. Verse yes. 14. And if you follow me and obey my decrees and my commands as your father David did, I will give you a long life. Woo. See, it just keeps getting better and better and better. When you seek ye God's heart, seek God's heart. This is the cherry on top of the already deliciousness. He just keeps piling it on. If I was to give you some ice cream today, I know everybody, just about everybody, loves ice cream. And then you get scoop on top of scoop on top of scoop. You get some whipped cream on it. Hallelujah. You get some little sprinkles. You get some nuts. And then you throw that cherry on top. The cherry on top is long life. Mm. Mm. Verse 15. Then Solomon woke up. All of this was in a dream. Some of us today need to wake up. And then he woke up and realized it had been a dream. And although a dream, Solomon knew that God had already spoken to him. So he took action. Although he was dreaming, he knew that God was real. When he woke up, he took action. Remember, he was at Gibeon. Gibeon, but he was there because the tabernacle was there. Remember, in the wilderness, the tabernacle went everywhere. Wherever God's spirit was, whoo, wherever the pillar of cloud would move, then the tabernacle, they had to get it up, the Levites, and move it. Mm. But God, with his good sake, <laughs> although they did not have the tabernacle and the Ark of the Covenant at the same place, the tabernacle was in Gibeon, and here it is, whoo, that the Ark of the Covenant was actually in Jerusalem. Now, you see, the Ark of the Covenant, it had the mercy seat, that gold seat, that actually where God's presence dwelt. That's where God's resting place was, was right there on the Ark of the Covenant, on the mercy seat. Today, we seek after God's mercy. We seek after God's truth. We Amen. seek after God's righteousness. And we seek after God's wisdom. All we have to do is make sure that we are one with God. Now, here it is. When Solomon woke up and realized it had been a dream, he returned to Jerusalem. Remember I said he, and the word says, he was at Gibeon, that hill that was about six miles from Jerusalem. And here he is. He returned to Jerusalem. And stood before the ark of the Lord's covenant. Where they were before they were doing. He was putting a thousand burnt. Remember a thousand burnt incense. He's doing all this excessive stuff. Being a show for the people. Doing what the people were doing. They were doing all kind of stuff. But God, he's like, here he is. He came to Solomon in his dream. And now Solomon returned to his mind. He went back to Jerusalem, stood before the Ark of the Lord's Covenant, where he sacrificed burnt offerings and peace offerings. Then he invited all his officials 
to a great banquet. Now that would be good right there. But here we go, verse 16. Sometime later, two prostitutes, okay, two prostitutes oh. came to the king, talking about Solomon, hallelujah, to have an argument settled. You know, kings, they, they actually, they were able to um, judge between two things. And remember, Solomon, he had already pleased God because he asked God for wisdom. He wanted a heart, hallelujah, a heart that would be able to receive, to know what is right and what is wrong. And so here it is. This means that everybody, no matter their status, they were able to come to the king. Mm. You ought to get excited right there because you, no matter what your status was, no matter what you had done, you were able to come to the king. Amen. Verse 17, please, my Lord, one of, one of them began, tell me about one of the, the prostitutes. This woman and I live in the same house. I gave birth to a baby while she was with me in the house. Three mm. days later. Mm, what else happened three days later? <laughs> That's right. Jesus rose three days later. But she said three days later, this woman also had a baby. When mm -hmm. we were alone, there were only two of us in the house. But her mm. baby died during the night when she rolled over on it. Mm. These two prostitutes living in a house together, both of them mm. pregnant at the same time. One gave yeah. birth, and then the other one gave birth. They're both nursing their babies through the night. One rolled mm -hmm. over on her baby and killed it. Mm. Mm. Then she got up, verse 20, in the night and took my son from beside me mm. while I was asleep. She laid her head, her dead child, in my arms and mm. took mine mm. to sleep beside her. We're talking about a real mother. mother. Now, Amen. verse 21, and in the morning, somebody ought to shout, in the morning. In the morning. In the morning. In the morning, there is so much that happens in the morning. You Amen. see, we meet mm. God in Amen. the morning. His mercies are new in the morning. Hallelujah. Each day he gives us, he is faithful to make sure that his mercies, hallelujah, are new each day. And so his yeah. mercies in the morning I see. And in the morning when I tried, she said, in the morning when I tried to nurse my son, he was dead. But when I looked more closely in the morning light, I saw that it wasn't my son at all. Everything is not what it seems like. Everything. Come on, family. People of God. Everything is not what it seems like. You got to make sure that you can examine it. In the morning light. At, not in the twilight. But in the morning light. As the sun is rising. As it gets higher and higher, things become more clear. Sometimes before the sun gets all the way up, we might be in our room and we see our hand in front of our face. But as the sun gets brighter and brighter, then we can see, oh, wait a minute, I got some freckles. I got a pimple there. I got a bump. I had a cut. But you couldn't see it in the darkness. Those things that are in the darkness sometimes, can be hidden. This woman tried to hide the fact that her baby was dead. She slipped her baby into the woman's arms and slipped the baby out, the woman's baby that was alive, out into her arms. Woo. Then the other woman interrupted chapter, verse 22. It certainly was your son, and the living child is mine. No, the first woman said, the living child is mine. And the dead one is yours. And so they argue oh. back and forth, forth and back, before the king. Now, can you imagine this heated conversation? Can you imagine this where we got two women, two prostitutes? Yeah. Now, I'm sure they don't bite their tongue. 
they're here in front of the king. They have a dead child and they have a live child. They both live in the same house. They both have the same occupation. Now here it is that they both are in front of the new king of Israel. Verse 23. Mm -hmm. Then the king said, let's get the facts straight. Both of you claim the living child is yours. And each says that the dead one belongs to the other. All right. Mm. Bring me a sword. So a sword was brought to the king. Then he wow. said, mm, hallelujah, cut the <laughs> living child in two and give half to one woman and half to the other. Okay, Lord, this is when everybody was probably looking out the side of their eye at the new king thinking, what can we do to get rid of him? Because he has lost his mind. Mm. Verse 26. Then the woman who was the real mother of the living child and who loved him very much cried out, Oh no, my Lord, give her the child. Please do not kill him. But the other woman said, All right, he will be neither yours nor mine. Divide him between us. You can always tell real love. Real love is going to make sure that you're taken care of. A real mother is going to make sure that that baby is taken care of. Even if she cannot have him as her own. Even if she has to give him up. Have to give him away. As long as he's still alive. If there is some type of way that she can have some power to persuade what's going on. She is like, no, yeah. I do not want this baby to die. She is a real mother. Hallelujah. Verse yeah. 27. Then the king said, do not kill the child, but give him to the woman who wants him to live. Mm. For she is his mother. You see, it took the wisdom of God to know who the real mother was. Amen. God gave Solomon his wisdom. Only the righteous, right judge, Jesus, can judge a matter. You see, one day, there will be two people in the house. Mm. Mm. They will both be mothers. One will have lived spiritually, and one will have lived a hellish life. One will Mm -hmm. say that I have accepted Jesus, and the other one will say, I have accepted Jesus. They will come to the end of their journey. And they will have to stand before God. And God, he will know. As the only righteous judge. Who has accepted his son Jesus. So that they are living. He is living now in their heart. He is the judge of every matter. He is that one. That we need in these last and evil days. He is the one that we need every day of our life. Not only for mothers, but for fathers and children too. People who are foreigners and people who are natives. No matter what land, what country you're listening to this at. God, he is the one who is the only righteous judge. And so verse 28 lets us know, when all Israel heard the king's decision, the people were in awe of the king. We ought to stay in awe of God. We know that God, he is awesome. I love to say that we only assign awesome to God because he keeps us in awe of who he is. That's A-W-E, awe of the king. For they saw the wisdom of God and the wisdom God had given him for rendering justice. Today we have awe of Jesus. Because he is the final judge. Hallelujah. We thank God that we can receive Jesus. We can receive salvation. We can receive life. That we can be at his side. Hallelujah. Not as a dead child, but as a live child. Hallelujah. In closing, if you are a mother, then be a real mother. Love your children even enough. To the point that Mm -hmm. it may hurt you to save them. 
Of course it would hurt the real mother in 1 Kings chapter 3 to give her child away. But it is better mm -hmm. to give up something you love so that it can be mm. saved. Hallelujah. Mm. Children, honor your mothers in life. That's right. The first thing you need to do is forgive and forget. I know that this mm -hmm. past week, mm, I had the privilege of talking to a lady who, she was homeless in her current status. And as we talked, whew, she was saying she could not forgive her mother. Mm. Don't you know today, no matter if you're in a palace or if you are in the streets, mm. it is so yeah. important to forgive your mother. No matter what you are holding on to, that's something that happened in the past. No matter how mm. small it is or how big it is, God calls us to forgive. Forgiveness is the key to our happiness. Some people are bound by not forgiving. They are holed up in chains, all tied up, bound up, can't live life fully because they are now in unforgiveness. If it has gripped you and you cannot move, it is painful for you to forgive. Because of this unforgiveness, you cannot move. God is saying right now, let it go. Forgive. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because yeah. it's more painful to continue living in unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. You just get tied mm -hmm. up, wrapped up more and more and more until you can't move. Mm -hmm. God wants us to. He said in Exodus 20 and 12, <laughs> in the, the commandments, the Ten Commandments, the first one with the promise is, Honor your father and mother. Then you will live a long, full life in the land your God is giving you. People, mm -hmm. don't you know, just as the two prostitute mothers were able to enter before the throne of King Saul, God has made it possible for everyone who will come to Jesus to come. All you have yeah. to do is come. Hallelujah. The spirit and the bride say, come. You may feel that you undeserve it and that your sin, the sin you committed is far too bad to be forgiven. Oh. God sent his only begotten son to do what no man, including Solomon, oh. could do. And that oh. is to forgive sin. Oh. So now as you forgive, know that God is waiting to forgive you. Amen. All you need to do is ask. Ask believing in his son, Jesus Christ. He is our redeemer. Amen. Before we were formed in our mother's womb, God knew the plans that he had for you and that they are for your good and not for your harm. The Amen. good is the good news that Jesus Christ he is the only begotten son of the Father. And he gave his life for us. When we were destined by sin to hell because of our first ancestors, Adam and Eve, you know, the mother of all living, who sinned. So therefore, we sinned. But God has the only answer. And the only answer today is Jesus. Bring your heart to him. Bring your heart to the true and wise God, Jesus, and he will expose your sin in his presence. Then he will forgive you if you only believe. God is saying, ask. Ask whatever it is. Just like he told Solomon. He said, ask. Ask whatever. Mm. And when you ask, Ask for Jesus. Amen. He's waiting for you to ask for Jesus. Ooh. And when you ask for Jesus, then the Father will be well pleased. Mm -hmm. If you're ready to ask for Jesus right now, hmm, say these words with me in prayer to God, meaning them in your heart, but saying them from your lips. Let us pray. Dear God, 
I am a sinner in need of a Savior. Lord, forgive me of my sin against you. Come into my heart and cleanse me and make me your own. I love you and I thank you. In your name, Jesus, amen. If you just said that prayer with me and you meant it from your heart, God, he heard it, and now you are saved. All you have to do is get into a great Bible teaching, Bible-believing church, where you can carry out the principles of God's word. Hallelujah. And now I can think of no better place, no better church, then right here at Inspiration Church, all you got to do is fill out the online information and we will be in touch with you or send us an email and we at minister at inspirationchurch.online. And God, Amen. God, he is meeting between us. Woo! And we're both giving him the glory. Now, we know that the angels in heaven are rejoicing because someone yes, came to Christ because of God's word. And now we rejoice also. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. At this time, before we have our benediction, we will ask our minister of music, um, Deaconess Diana Herring, to lead us in a closing song. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you so much. Amen. I need you. You need me. We are part of God's body. Stand with me. Agree with me. We are all a part of God's body. It is His will. That every need be supplied. You are important to me. I need you to survive. You are important to me. I need you to survive. I need you. You need me. We are all a part of God's body. Stand with me, agree with me, we're all a part of God's body. It is His will that every need be supplied. You are important to me, I need you to survive. You are important to me, I need you to so I pray for you. You pray for me. I love you. I need you to survive. I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I love you. I need you to survive. I pray for you. You pray for me. I love you. I need you to survive. I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I love you. I need you to survive. I pray for you. You pray for me. I love you. I need you to survive. I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I love you. I need you to survive. I pray for you. You pray for me. I love you. I need you to survive. I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I love you. I need you to survive. It is his will that every need be survived. You are important to me. I need you to survive. It is His will that every need be supplied. You are important to me. I need you to survive. Thank <laughs> you.
Amen. Ooh, amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. That's magnificent. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Well, thank you. You know, this is the part that I never like to see it come to an end, but you know what? We may depart from each other, but never from the presence of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We don't have to go to Jerusalem or Gibeon or anywhere else that we have. Amen. Hallelujah. He can rest right on our heart that his presence yes. is always with us. Hallelujah. Amen. And so we have the Holy Ghost living on the inside of us. How great Amen. is that when we accept Jesus Christ? And so Amen. we're so excited for our new uh, members, for our new converts. We thank God for Amen. you. Thank God for our mothers. This weekend, make sure you um, honor your the mothers in your life, no matter how they come about. Please honor them because God has placed them there. And so at Amen. this time, let's prepare our hearts for benediction. Now, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet communion of His Holy Spirit rest rule and abide with us now and forever and the church said amen amen, amen. 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 glory amen. to god